So how many people say they like chocolate? Ah, excellent. All right. So when I think of planetary stewardship, I think of chocolate. Yeah. You see, my real education about the world and how it functions began with my understanding of chocolate. It marks the moment when I started to ask why again, a question that I, like most children when they begin school, ask all the time. But we stop when we enter school because we are told to sit still and listen up. I was a good student, and so I stopped asking why. Until my first visit to a cacao farm. It was amazing, and I was surrounded by beautiful, beautiful cacao trees with elongated pods that looked very much like American footballs, as you can see here. The colors of the pods ranged from white to green and orange to brown. Now, I learned that day that the history of chocolate dates back to over 4,000 years ago in equatorial South America, where it was cultivated. The beans then were as valuable as gold, and in fact, it was used as currency in trade. They were also used for a special drink, which was served to warriors and served at royal feasts. Now, as one story goes, in 1519, Hermann Cortes saw how Montezuma II and his team were greeted at the court with 50 jugs of foaming cacao, all held in golden cups. Another story suggests that cacao was introduced when a group of Mayans from Guatemala visited Spain in 1544. Either way, the Spaniards were highly intrigued. And by the mid-17th century, they began to develop quite an appetite for cacao. To feed the increasing demand, the Spanish used African slaves to work on the plantations. And in the early 1800s, when the cocoa press was invented and powdered milk was added, the chocolate bar, as we know it today, was created. And as the appetite increased even more, the Spanish transported the cacao plants to Western Africa in the early 1800s and much later to Southeast Asia. And at the moment, Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana provide the world with over 60% of the world's cacao, followed by Indonesia and Ecuador. But this is just one side of the story. There's a dark side to chocolate. At the moment, there are over 50 million cacao farmers around the world. Our demand has forced them into monoculture farming. They earn and live exclusively from cacao. And what they earn is less than a dollar a day, despite the extremely labor-intensive work that has to be done by hand. In an effort to maximize their yield, many farmers engage their children and don't send them to school. At the moment, there are over one and a half million children who do not go to school because they're working on the farms so that we could enjoy our chocolate bars. Now, as a mother, an international educator, and a fellow planetary citizen, I find this quite unsettling. So after my visit to the farm that day, I returned to my room, and I saw the chocolate bars that I had purchased at the airport earlier on. And I looked very closely at the packaging, and I read through the ingredients, and I asked myself, well, where does the sugar come from? The milk, the cacao. How were they created, and under which conditions? And what was the impact? That's when I realized that these chocolate bars had a story to tell, and I no longer wanted to become a part of that story. And that was the day I started to ask why again, and I realized that everything is connected. When we see what's going on today, I believe that we've, we've lost our way because we've forgotten to connect the dots. So what does a chocolate bar have to do with climate change? Everything. We accept things the way that they are because it is easy to do so. We don't often ask how the things that we do or buy, use or enjoy, affect others or the planet. We don't connect the dots in how we treat or teach our children the finest ingredients that humanity has to offer. The story of climate change is not about the rising temperatures or the droughts or the wildfires. These are the manifestations of something else. The story of climate change is about us 
It's about our behaviors, our lifestyles, and, and our habits that have contributed to the mismanagement, the extraction, and the imbalance on our planet. I believe it's time for us to shift the agenda and to ask ourselves why things are the way that they are. Because by asking why, it helps us to understand how we got here. And by, by understanding how we got here, we can create a vision for where we need to go. And by creating that vision, we can develop a plan as to how we can contribute in our own ways to get there. And this is where I believe that schools could play a significant role. I believe that schools should exist to help students to connect the dots, to help them to understand the cycle of everything that we use and buy and eat and wear and enjoy. Schools should offer students a sense of agency in their learning and in their lives, and the two should be connected. This, I believe, can be achieved by asking two essential questions. Why and how? There is an Akan proverb from Ghana that says, the one who asks questions doesn't lose his way. Kids are all about whys. Why this and why that all of the time. And as I'd mentioned earlier, kids stop very often when they enter school because schools are not really designed to answer their whys. So the more I asked why after my visit to the farm, I learned that the practice of monoculture farming destroys the Earth's natural biodiversity. This leads to land erosion. And this is dire for the people who depend on it for their livelihood and for the Earth. Why? Well, monoculture relies on pesticides to control the weeds and the insects. Pesticides reduce pollinators. And this contributes to pollution, which is harmful for us and the Earth. And as we see here through the story, everything is connected. And once I connected the dots, I realized that I actually was a part of a problem. I then applied this new knowledge to everything else. I questioned the meat and the vegetables that I ate, the coffee and the, and, and the teas that I drank. I questioned the plastic that I saw everywhere, the beautiful shoes that I love. Where did they come from? How were they created and, and, and what was the impact? Everything has a story to tell. And once I knew that story, I felt empowered because I had a choice. I had a choice to become a part of that story or to participate in creating a new one. The second question is about how we can all contribute. Much of the knowledge that kids learn today in most schools has little to do with what the future will demand of them. And I believe that shifting the focus from grades to contribution could provide our younger generation with a sense of agency. And like the planetary system or the human body where every cell and organ has an integral role to play, I believe that schools should consider how students can contribute to the well-being of our planet. Our greatest challenges should become the basis upon which our kids learn to connect the dots. So the droughts and the eroded shores, the Katrinas and the Ians, these are all warnings that we need to change now. This is about your future, now, the place where you're going to be for the rest of your lives. It's on us, adults, guardians, educators, to listen and to support them in figuring out the whys. Because you never know what magic exists on the other side of that question. It's on us to help them to connect the dots which will become the stepping stones along their journey. And to you all, Never stop asking why. And don't wait to grow up to become who you're meant to be. Because who knows what you will create today? What actions you might inspire, what you might build? Asking why gives you a choice. And with each choice, you create impact. And in fact, this impact is already happening. Chocolate companies are being forced to reconsider their whys because consumers are demanding more ethical and fair practices. And as we see, every small choice could lead to big change. So what does a chocolate bar have to do with climate change? Everything. Wouldn't it be great if your kids and their kids and their kids could also enjoy chocolate or the foods that you love today? If we lived on a planet where we didn't have to face dire droughts or frequent floods and raging wildfires? 
Well, that's a story that I would love to be a part of. What about you? Thank you.